Let's talk about this interesting system. What makes this system interesting is the two columns of zeros. You will find that if you rewrite the system as a collection of equations, then the variables y and t that correspond to the zero columns aren't even participating. For example, the first equation would read x plus 2z equals 3, no y or t. Similarly, the second equation would read 2x plus 4z equals 6. Once again, we're not hearing from y and t, and so forth. So if you were to write this as a collection of equations, you would also need to somehow mention that, oh, by the way, there are two more variables, y and t, that are not appearing in the system. So you're solving three equations with four unknowns, x, y, z, and t, of which only two variables actually appear in the system. Now, this situation where some variables are part of a problem we're trying to solve, but don't make it into the linear system that was constructed to help us solve that problem, is much more common than you would think. When that situation does happen, it means that the variables y and t, or whatever variables correspond to the zero columns, or whatever variables there are in the problem but don't make it into the system, can have arbitrary values. So let's construct the solution according to the way we've been doing it all along and just see how this feature manifests itself. And let's just make sure that whatever expression we obtain here is telling us that the variables y and t can have arbitrary values. Okay, let's first think of the particular solution. And once again, I believe I made it easy to see because the column on the right-hand side is a simple sum of these two non-zero columns. So to get the right-hand side, we have to have one of this column and one of this column and not involve the zero columns. So a particular solution is one, zero, one, zero. Okay, that's it for the particular solution. Now let's address the question of the null space. And of course, as soon as there is zero, the zero vector in the mix, the collection of vectors is automatically linearly dependent. Because the zero vector, in this case the zero column, is linearly dependent all by itself. You can see that because this column is expressed as the zero linear combination of the rest. Or if you're looking for a non-trivial linear combination that equals zero, then you can take one of this column, that makes the linear combination non-zero, and zero of all the other columns. So the corresponding element in the null space is 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0, 0. And this just captures the fact that this column is zero. In fact, you will find that looking at the null space, and this is just part of the null space, frequently tells us a lot about the matrix. But when you see a vector like this, with just a single non-zero entry, it immediately tells us that, oh, listen, there's the zero column in the matrix, and it's the second column, because this one is in the second position. So from the matrix, we all can always determine the null space, but from the null space, we can sometimes tell, say quite a bit about the matrix. Okay, so this is the vector that corresponds to this column being zero. And of course, there's another one that corresponds to this column being zero. And that linear combination would be zero, 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 one. So that's the other element of the null space. Our null space in this case is two dimensional. Zero, 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 one. And here's our null space. And this problem is solved. So now let's see what this expression is telling us. Because the parameters alpha and beta can have arbitrary values, we see that the variables y and t can have arbitrary values as well because they correspond perfectly to this one for y and to this one for t. So whatever values alpha and beta have, those will be the values of y and t. So what we saw right away by thinking of the system as a collection of equations, and that's that y and t can have arbitrary values, because after all they're multiplied by zeros, or not even participating if we think of the system as equations, we're now seeing the same thing from our robust way of solving linear systems, 
more robust way of thinking about linear systems, that y and t can have arbitrary values corresponding to alpha and beta. So that's complete success as far as I'm concerned. Now I would like to mention one common mistake that I see for this problem. I often see the null space appear as alpha, 0, 1, 0, 1. And this is incomplete. It is true that this vector is in the null space, which you can see by assigning beta always the same value as alpha. And that tells us that this vector in the, is in the null space. But this expression does not acknowledge the fact that our zero columns are individually linearly dependent. That if this column was the only zero column, that in itself is a linear dependence among the columns. And the fact that now this column is also the zero column, that in itself is a linear dependence. So they both deserve to be represented in the null space. So for example, the vector 0, 1, 0, 2 is clearly in the null space, which we can see by taking alpha equals 1 and beta equals 2, or by realizing that 1 of this column plus 2 of this column is the 0 column, either way. But that, that vector is, of course, not captured by this expression. So when you see 0 columns, you immediately find elements in the null space that are born simply by that column being 0. And so to every 0 column, there corresponds an element in the null space. Okay, now I also want to ask a question that I've asked in a couple of previous problems. Did we get lucky that the right-hand side was in the column space of the matrix? Well, let's do a simple count. The system lives in a three-dimensional space, R3, and we have four vectors in the three-dimensional space. So by simple count, we have plenty of vectors to decompose the right-hand side. On the other hand, two of the vectors are zero, and therefore completely useless. So in fact, we have only two vectors in a three-dimensional space to represent the right-hand side. So that count tells us that we were actually lucky that the right-hand side was in the column space of the matrix. So let me change the right-hand side one more time and ask you, does this system have a solution? And the quick answer is, most likely not, whereas before the right-hand side was hand-picked to be in the column space of the matrix, now it's a little bit more arbitrary. And when we're lacking vectors for the dimension that we're working with, it's very unlikely that the arbitrary right-hand side would be in the column space. Okay, so that's a question of likelihood. But can we say for certain that this vector cannot be expressed as a linear combination of these columns? And here's how I would answer that question. Yes, we can say that it cannot be expressed as a linear combination of the columns because I'm noticing the following feature, that all the columns, including the zero columns, have the feature that the second entry is twice the first. Second entry twice the first, second entry twice the first, second entry twice the first. So if I were to capture the column space with an expression, I would say a, 2a, and then there's a question of what's, what could go into the third entry, but it's actually not relevant in order to determine that this system doesn't actually have a solution as it's currently written. Later on we'll find out that we actually have total freedom of choice in the third entry, so the column space actually reads a, 2a, and b. Any value, twice that value, and any other value. But just this portion is enough to see that the right-hand side is not in the column space of this matrix because 16 is not twice 3. So this is the column space and this is the vector on the right and it's not in the column space. So as it's written now, the system doesn't have a solution. So there you go, just another example of the value of the null space and the value of the column space. As always, both are very important. The column space you need to know in order to determine whether the right-hand side is in the column space and therefore whether the system has a solution at all. And the null space you need to know because it is added to any particular solution and helps us capture 
all possible solutions of the problem when the columns are linearly dependent.